We are here at the Helmholtz Center GSI in Germany, right in front of the data center where the Sanam computer has been constructed. Uh, this machine was planned jointly by the Frankfurt Institute for Advanced Studies and the Kinangdula City for Science and Technology, Cax in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. So after evaluating all the possible requirements, uh, evaluating the applications, the plan was formed and we decided to try to build the highest efficient computer and also the fastest computer available for the uh, budget. Today this is possible by using graphics cards, general purpose graphics cards, which are integrated in servers. This particular machine uses four graphics cards per server, which means that there is a very large amount of power introduced there. We are talking about more than 1.2 kilowatts in one small server, which means cooling is an essential critical part. AMD has provided the GPUs which have performed very well and we are very happy in the collaboration with AMD in particular helping us doing the last optimizations in their driver software to enable the highest possible performance of this hardware. The um, collaboration with Atech was critical in particular because such systems have a very high power density. They get hot literally, so cooling, airflow, the uh, complete integration of the machine is absolutely critical. My name is John Gustafson. I'm the Chief Product Architect for the Graphics Division at AMD. And I would like to talk a little bit about the architectural leadership that AMD shows with respect to uh, power efficiency and why that's so important and why it's exhibited by a recent win that we had at the, with the Sanon supercomputer. The whole challenge that we now face in building the fastest machines possible is no longer how much money you're willing to spend. You run out of something else long before you run out of money because processors are not that expensive anymore. What you run out of is electricity. You just can't get enough watts into a facility to go as fast as you'd like. The, the whole limit on how, much, how fast you can really go is the, how many operations per watt can you do. So this is an area where AMD has long been a leader. Uh, I think as long as I can remember being in computing, AMD has had very aggressive designs that are, get a lot of performance for the amount of electricity that they consume. To me, a totally amazing thing, given the history of, of supercomputing, that you can now buy a, a plug-in board, a graphics plug-in board, like a Fire Pro, and put it into your personal computer, and it will go faster than any computer on the planet did in the year 2000, just by itself. That's a lot of advance in only 12 years. AMD came to us because of our skill set in server development, and server support and our ability to build both locally in Germany where this installation took place as well as our multiple locations in the UK and the US. We had to take their card and find a server solution that would house it uh, that would be able to withstand shipping, heat, airflow issues, cooling uh, scales that had to be met, we had engineering and development efforts going on. We had improvement efforts. We had logistics, purchasing, manufacturing, shipping, and delivery that had to be done all within a very short period of time. All of the material was procured and the servers were assembled in our U.S. facility in Alpharetta, Georgia. These were very specific applications. This particular application was designed and developed specifically for um, molecular ion accelerators, but future projects we'll be working on will be projects for the atomic commissions, for other applications that require high-speed clustering supercomputers. This particular opportunity was a very quick delivery. We had a, uh, a short time frame to deliver the solution uh, in order to make the Green 500 list. We had to look at our breadth of resources around the world. So we looked at a collaboration not only between Germany, but what we had at our facility here, also in London, to determine where could we deliver the quality of the solution that was needed in the time frame that was desired. It's hard to believe that it was just in the 1960s when the first supercomputer came out to where we are today. It's growing so fast to where I think we'll hit an exaflop in the next few years. The type of technology that's going to be needed will be ever-changing. Where I think our company is positioned so well is that we constantly are changing also and adapting to the needs of the customer. As computers get larger and larger, 
the ability to power and to cool those computers become one of the bigger challenges. I think there's going to be just as much of a push going forward of not only the availability of computing, but also how do you control that into a larger environment. We're not looking just at the processor, just at the memory, just at any certain components, but we're truly understanding what is the customer wanting to do today, where does the customer see themselves in the future, and are we bridging the right technology to get them there. This whole project was a very joint collaboration done on a very high time pressure because, as always, components are being used, which are the latest available on the market. It consists of 300 nodes and has reached a performance of 420 teraflops and is number two in the Green 500 list, meaning this is one of the most energy efficient systems in the world. This is only possible by using uh, this combination of processing elements. The end product, the end solution, is going to wind up in Riyadh at CAST, which is a Saudi Arabian institute, and we'll be working with them directly and AMD continuously on improving the performance of the product over time. It was very exciting to be able to achieve number two on the Green 500 list for power efficiency. It was also very exciting to be able to achieve number 52 on the supercomputing uh, speed and performance. This application was probably one of the most challenging and high-end application we've ever worked on. Wow.